Hello, YouTubers. How is everyone tonight? Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Lori at Loops and Leather. And I appreciate everybody being here and stopping in, watching my videos. Um, if you like my videos and you appreciate what I'm sharing, please do like and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to grow my channel. And every little comment, share, like, uh, and subscriber helps me do that. So... I love sharing anyway, so nothing's going to change there, but um, I would appreciate the support. So anyway, let's jump into it. Tonight is just a brief what's on the loom update. I am actually, I've been focusing a lot of time on setting up a new to me floor loom and she's a beast. Uh, we will <laughs> take a look at her at a later video, but for now. I've really been neglecting my rigid heddle the last couple of weeks while I've been focused on that floor loom. And I finally have the floor loom uh, pretty much situated. And so I wanted to get back to this project that I've been, um, you know, it's been on the rigid heddle loom. So I unwound this a bit so that you could see what it is. I have warped double strand of knitting yarn off the cone. I have gobs of it, and so I thought it would be a great way to use up some of my stash. I'm calling this project Thick and Thin. I hope I'm not blocking the light. I'm sorry if I am. Got this stuck on here. So, yeah, so this project I'm calling Thick and, or uh, This and That. Sorry, This and That. So it is, because it's a little bit of this and that. I have um, knitting yarn doubled for my warp and my weft. I just strung two strands through every hole in every slot when I was warping the loom. <clears throat> and I made it about 72 inches, roughly 72 inches long. Um, and then I also added every fifth warp thread, I added a um, warp of this thick and thin wool. It's the screaming hot pink, and I thought it would just. I, the only well it might work great with black too but I just thought the contrast with white was going to be awesome so I went with the white and I was going to use eyelash yarn then I decided not to use eyelash yarn and then I realized I missed one of the holes when I was threading my warp so I'm like okay I'm using eyelash yarn so it was early enough in the uh, weave when I realized it, actually pretty much right at the beginning. So I went ahead and added eyelash yarn randomly through um, throughout the warp as well. And I just have it hanging off the back of the loom uh, with weights on it because it wasn't part of my original roll on warp. I'm just hanging it with weights and it works out just fine. Every now and then I'll give it a tug just to make sure it's, you know, got some tension against it, that it's not bunching up anywhere as I'm weaving. Because sometimes the heddle will push, you know, push it down. Um, so I don't want it to get bunched up. But uh, this is turning out to be a super fun, fun project. And I love it because not only is it using up stash yarn, which I didn't have to buy anything. And I can use some of, you know, making space for more yarn, of course. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's just relaxing because I can just enjoy weaving. There is no pattern to follow. So it's random. Wherever the thick and thin wool starts getting thick, I bring it up on the top as a, a warp float. So I will show you how I do that. And I had uh, unwound this some so that you could see it. Let me pause for just a minute and I'm going to get this uh, pulled back down so I can actually weave and show you. Be right back. All right, here we are. We're back to actual weaving uh, space. So I've got my shuttle and my tip from a previous vi video, and I'll probably say it in every video, just because I think it's such uh, a helpful thing, is to use a shuttle that is about the same width as your project, if, if at all possible. And the reason for this is every time you pass across, you know that you just have to unwrap one wrap on your shuttle and you have enough for the next pass. And that way you don't end up with really long tails like this, or you don't run out as you're uh, passing your shuttle through your work. 
you know, if you forget to unwrap enough, you get stuck partway through. Then you have to pull it back out and unwrap some and then do the pass again. By having a shuttle that's about the same width, each pass you just unwrap one time and it's the next, enough for the next pass. So there you have it, my tip all again. So what I'm doing uh, to uh, create these warp floats is when I'm um, coming across on the upshed. So we are going to go upshed. I'm doing this one-handed, so I apologize. It's a little wonky. All right. Upshed and wherever I come across a section where the yarn, the wool is getting fat, I'll bring that to the surface. I will say that I'm trying to keep these floats to about an inch or less. Some of them may be just a touch more than that, but you really don't want floats much longer than that. Even this is pushing it just a little bit because what will happen is it'll get stuck or you can catch it on clothing or yeah, jewelry. So be aware not to make your floats too long if you're working on a project like this. So I'm just passing underneath you know, my warps like I normally would. But when I come to one that I want to the surface, I just put my shuttle underneath that individual thread and it's going to bring it up to the top when it normally wouldn't be. So this particular warp thread, if I just went straight across like normal, it would be smushed down. Okay. But because I'm passing my shuttle just underneath that one thread, it brings it to the surface and keeps it up at the top. And that's what gives you that fun texture and um, color. This thread over on the side here is getting to the point that I could uh, start bringing it up to the top. But again, I'm trying, well, okay, maybe next, maybe next one. I'm trying to keep these floats not too long. So I will just wait for the next pass for that one. Um, and so you just, you know, make sure your solve edges are good as usual. Beat, down shed, and I've lost my, ha <laughs> All right, one moment, i fix this. Here we go. All right. This is a knitter's loom, and if you don't have that angle just right, it uh, does not work. <laughs> it's all about the or dynamics of a loom. Um, all right, so for down shed, I'm just going under all of the warp threads like normal. And I've got my salvage. And I beat like normal, up shed. All right, my next up shed, I am going to bring up this, this end thick and thin wool that we were talking about just a minute ago. Whoops, oh, look at what I did. I went over, it was supposed to be under. Well, phooey. We're going to undo that. I want it at the top. So we'll just go back the other way. We'll undo that pass. Okay. Here I'm demonstrating and losing track of what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, I went over, over, I just went over everything. Okay. And really, I don't have to undo the whole thing. I just had to come back far enough to bring that, that one up to the surface. Oops, there we go. All right, we are back on track. We'll go ahead and beat that. All right.
and under all on my pass. Ugh. My tension. All right, and back over to this one. So I'm gonna keep this one to the surface, and now I'm going to bring this one up to the surface. So instead of going over it like I normally would, I went under it. And I'll do a couple more passes so you can see how that's now going to show up at the top. And then I'll show you how I'm getting the eyelash yarn up to the surface as well. You'll notice some of these spots with the eyelash yarn. That's what I was saying. It kind of is bunching up a little bit. So I will just pull up from the back and make sure that I've got some tension on there. I may have to put more weight on it. That's okay. Not a big deal. Okay. And then up shed. We're going back under this one and under this one, over on the side. So we're underneath. And beat. And then last pass underneath all in that shed just a regular uh, row or a weft pick depending on your lingo all right i'm gonna put this in neutral so you can see now that um this is starting to come to the surface and I'll continue up, you know, number of picks and then I will start going back over it again to lock it back down and uh, to keep it, you know, about an inch long or so. The other ones, but it's just random. Uh, you know, it's, I didn't warp it any special way. So when the, the thickness comes, that's when it comes to the surface. And it just creates a totally unique, one-of-a-kind piece. Um, now, for the eyelash yarn. What I'm doing when I want to bring some of this to the surface, I'm using this blunt darning, or uh, I guess tapestry needle. It's not sharp, and so it's not going to snag my regular yarn the way a sharp needle would. You still have to be mindful that, you know, you're picking at, a woven cloth so you you don't want to uh, you know snag any of the other yarn but what I'm doing is I'm just randomly grabbing sections of this where I want the eyelash yarn to kind of bloom at the surface so I will gently just kind of pull up on it I know that there's long bits of the eyelash fuzz kind of buried under my my weft and because I have these hanging off the back I actually could lift the whole uh, strand and it's not going to bother anything I wouldn't be able to do that if it was part of my regular uh, warp that was wound on the back beam so I've got a little bit of an advantage uh, <laughs> by accident but so I'll do that and then I'll actually go up to the next one the stitch up next one above or you could do the one below but because I know that those fibers on there are long 
they're locked underneath there. So this kind of helps just bring some of that to the surface. And then I will give a tug back on the, the warp and it brings those fibers up. And again, I'm just doing this randomly. There's no pattern to it. I'm just having fun with it. And I think that's one thing that we kind of lose sight of sometimes when we're weaving. We're so focused on tension and self edges and, um, you know, a pattern that we're working on. And, it, it, you know, weaving can be very complicated. And so just being able to kind of throw some of that uh, caution, I guess, to the wind or just not have to worry about working a specific pattern makes it a lot more fun. You can just kind of veg and watch TV and weave and just enjoy the rhythm of it without having to um, really pay too much attention to it. Other than, of course, you, know, you want a good tension on your warp and you always need to pay attention to those edges, but this just lets you kind of free form. It's super fun and it uses up stash. So if you have ladder yarn, eyelash yarn, any kind of funky texture, this thick and thin, people are like, what do I do with thick and thin? This is a great use for thick and thin. Um, throw it on a loom, just randomly get them in there. It's, it's just, um, one of a kind piece. I think people are really, um, you know, enjoy these. If you have a Nazi shop or you're doing shows, they're fun, they're colorful. I'll be doing a bunch more. I've got a ton, like I said, of this knitting yarn and I've got quite a bit of this thick and thin. I've got all kinds of eyelash yarn and uh, ladder yarn. So I'm, I'm going for it and just having fun with it. And hopefully uh, you like them too. But that's it for tonight. Uh, next week, I am captaining a team for the annual spin together. It's a annual event uh, for spinning uh, yarn, obviously. But um, yeah, sign up ends today. So if anybody is a spinner out there and is interested in participating, it is a contest. Uh, my team is Team Motley Crew. It's pretty laid back. We're you know not so much about winning like the most yarn or something thing like that but uh you know it's a little friendly competition we are just as much or more focused on sharing learning and just the camaraderie though so all experience levels are welcome but you do have to be signed up by uh the 30th which is today september 30th and spinning starts at noon on saturday october 2nd it's noon wherever you are so if it's uh, noon eastern time you start uh, noon Pacific, you have to wait a couple of hours. Those East Coast people will be a couple hours ahead of you. Uh, but it is actually uh, intercontinental. So we have people from Mexico, from Canada. I think there's a group from um, Europe as well. So you can join any group you want as long as there's spaces available. The maximum of 25 people per team. And it's 15 bucks to participate. Um, there's categories for prettiest yarn spun, most yarded spun. Um, there's categories for e-spinners, drop spindling, kick spindles, spinning wheels. So there's really something for everybody and it's just a fun competition slash annual get together. It runs for a week. Um, check it out. It's spintogether.org. Uh, make sure you signed up September 30th. Today's the cutoff. So I hope to see some of you uh, there in the spinning groups. In the meantime, please like and subscribe to my videos. I will definitely be posting some of what I'm working on in the spin together. And uh, we have Angora goat shearing coming up. I got all kinds of stuff going on. Fall is a crazy busy time of year on a farm um, and also getting ready for the holidays. So I hope everybody has a great rest of your evening. Please like and subscribe if you have comments. Uh, you know, post below and I will I'll be happy to respond. Questions, comments, recommendations. Love to see, love to see your comments. Everyone have a great rest of your evening. Stay safe, take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.